Okay, Weber Mobile. So I'm really just going to talk a little bit about the process of, of Weber Mobile. Um, I'm just checking how much more I've got to talk about. Um, so there's, there's a few things here, right? If you go into like a fairly high end development, there's quite a lot of processes you can go through to get a website. Or if you're, if you're at the, the other end of it and you're just starting up as a business, there's loads of websites out there that will allow you to kind of automatically set up your own online shop or whatever it might, it might be Shopify, it could be Wix, you can use things like WordPress. Um, there's lots and lots and lots. Squarespace would be another one. But there are literally like hundreds of these services out there that pretty much allow you to set up a shop, choose your color, upload your logo, upload your about page and start selling products really, really quickly. If you go into a kind of more high-end development with a, with a big brand, there's a whole load of a series of, of things that you have to do that build out uh, the user experience. So the, the first thing is you're going to do a whole load of research about what you need, and that will be like what content do you want to display, who are the users that you're trying to approach, who are the business stakeholders, what, what goals and objectives are they trying to achieve, what existing analytics do you do you already have? And then once you've got that, you're going to kind of then begin to define your personas. So these are kind of like the um, the people that you believe will visit your website. From that, you're going to then create some scenarios. So let's just say that, or um, well, let's just use the shop example. So the shop example might be Dave, who's our persona. Um, wants to buy something so what's the scenario well the scenario is that he's going to come onto your shop um and the scenario is so he wants to buy a medium-sized t-shirt so okay so if we know that what from a user flow point of view does dave then need to do well first of all he needs to hit the website then he needs to be able to find uh, the t-shirt then he needs to once he's found his t-shirt then he needs to select the you know the size that he wants then he needs to go through to buy it add in his personal details his credit card details and hit send so that would be the user flow and then you've got kind of the content strategy so what's the content that we need on this website well if we know from an seo point of view we need to start driving lots of t-shirt sales we probably need to start talking a lot about t-shirts on our website um, you may look at a content audit of the existing content plus any new content that you may want to put there. And then the experience maps are really more around um, like spider diagrams and that kind of stuff where you're really beginning to dig into that persona and, and, and what we need them to do and what tasks you may have to do on the website. And from there, you kind of go into sketching what the interface may look like and building out the site maps that allow these user flows and user journeys to happen. And then there's um, some, then you may want to like prototype the thing. So this is effectively without doing any code at all, you can kind of create the experience that a user might have. They then go through that experience online and um, work out uh, if there's any glitches in, in, in the prototype. So there's, there's some good prototyping tools um, worth checking out. Envision is probably the most popular one. Um, very kind of simple to use. It's kind of like, you know, if you're creating almost like a PowerPoint slide, but it's a website and a mobile, it creates kind of like clickable interfaces and that kind of stuff. Um, Marvel apps, another one. Um, Framer is another one, but yeah, Envision I would say is probably one of the, the most popular ones that I'm I'm aware of. So if you know, ever want to kind of create like a mobile app or a website, and you need to try and like work it out in your head, how's it all gonna how's it all gonna happen? Then you can build those prototypes out. Then you do your user testing, which is basically getting them to sit down, use that prototype. And there's loads, I mean, again, you know, there's eye te eye tracking tools, mouse tracking tools. You know, people were literally looking at how long does it take somebody to um, drag their mouse from from one point to another to try and speed up the process. And we're talking like milliseconds, but people are literally trying to work out from an interface point of view how to do that. Um, and then you go into design 
uh, and the visualization of the actual app once you're happy with it all this could be wireframes and then you obviously develop the, the product from there um this was just a little bit of a mobile uh one so um time spent daily using the internet via mobile phones at the moment on average it's three hours 40 a day uh on your on your in your browser on your mobile uh, which feels like i wonder what you're doing for the rest of the day uh, in the uk it's a bit lower it's it's two hours 44 but it goes as high up in the philippines as five hours almost six hours in the philippines but again these are different cultures and and in the philippines they probably literally don't have desktops and laptops that much they're probably using mobiles quite a lot if you want to get into development um there's a few areas you can go into obviously it begins it's obviously code that you're looking at from a mobile point of view you'll be looking at things called sdks software development kits those will be like native to uh, to apple to android they'll they'll also be um other kind of um products that will kind of work both over apple and android at the same time um You'll be looking at back end, so that's front end for mobile. For back end, you'll be looking at things like Node.js, um, open APIs, and APIs APIs are called application program interfaces. Um, and then you'll have, then the other piece is the back end to the back end. I would kind of call it the back end, but it's the database building as well. Uh, from a website point of view, it's things like PHP, HTML, CSS, Python, Ruby um those kind of uh code bases that you need to look into to see if that's something that you would want to go on from a kind of career point of view uh email and sms i'm just working there's not too much left that's cool so um there's a few things with email i mean one of the first things is you've got to get people's email addresses you've got to get their phone numbers so that's one task once you feel like you've built that audience out it's really about looking about how can you segment that audience and send relevant messages, personalized messages to those audiences. So some of the work I did with a particular car brand, you might be able to work it out from the image which car brand we're talking about. Um, it was really about looking about, okay, so we, we seg we've decided to segment them into sports, hybrids, four by fours, small cars, family cars and work cars. And even from that piece of information, it's like, okay, what are we going to talk to them about? There's no point talking about uh, keeping the kids amused uh, if you've got a sports car, because the chances are you can't fit a kid in your sports car. So even down to thinking about like, okay, how am I going to talk to these different audiences um, through through emails? Still important. Email still, uh, you know, a massive uh conversion point for for e-commerce and sales and that kind of stuff and basically because if somebody's bothered to subscribe to your database they probably like your brand and care about your brand so getting email getting mobile uh phone numbers albeit you need to be compliant when you're doing it there's something called gdpr which is effectively the data protection um regulations um to, to stop you spamming any old person that hasn't subscribed to your database but it's definitely worth doing as part of your marketing efforts um when when setting up your own business um and then basically like once we kind of worked out who these people are and what we wanted to them, we then needed to try and work out well what's the email uh, journey that we want to take these people on like from in this instance, uh, requesting product information. Um, and then obviously, so they request product information, we'll, we'll, um, we'll have sent them some sort of ad hoc email on product launch. So then they may go through, do a brochure request, do they want it postal, do they want an email? Um, we ask them, are they existing owner? If they're an existing owner, we send them off somewhere else. If they're not, then we'll send them like a 14 day test drive email invite if they haven't um, responded to us. Uh, if they didn't respond, we send them to the newsletter sign up. Uh, if they do respond, we'll put them into like test drive request. So you can see we've built out this whole journey 
And this whole thing, if you remember me talking about that email automation, like they subscribe, they get an email saying thank you for subscribing and pointing them somewhere. That's effectively what this is. So it's a process of automating some of the communications with customers to make your life easier, um, but also in a way of optimizing it. So for instance, you may find like, well, if we send the email on day 14, we get, uh, we get 10% of our audience requesting a test drive. But if we actually send it seven days, what happens then? Do we, do we get 20% or do we get 5%? So it's really about ways of building these programs out and then working out how you can kind of improve them as you go. Uh, for this, this was like the owners, um, the owners, so people who own the car, we'd be sending them a quarterly newsletter um, regardless and then we'd be sending them other information about like roadside cover and that kind of stuff. But for Toyota, we actually built out kind of like a two year plan of every single email that a, a, an owner would get from the moment they picked up their car from the, from the garage. Um, and that, that was there to help them feel like they were important Toyota and then wanted to buy the product. Um, this is, is something around like reporting for email. So there's a whole bunch of metrics down here. So one thing is like delivery success, right? So why that's important is because if, let's say you've got a database of like 500 people, if the email only gets to 250 of them because you've got the wrong email address or they've deleted their email account or it keeps hitting their spam, then the performance of your data is bad and it's probably costing you money and making you inefficient. Then when you get into kind of the engagement, so it's really about like open rates. Do you, do you A-B test the subject line? Click through rates. Do you have different types of call to actions? So one button may say buy, another button may say shop. Which one of those works better uh, through your email? Um, and that, that just helps you improve your email performance, particularly open rates and click through rates. Um, but also sales as well. It's like measuring that. That will be effectively the success of it. If we can actually get somebody to buy something direct from an email, that's obviously a good sign. Um, and then the other areas to look at is like, are you sending emails too often uh, or not frequently enough? Um, what type of email did they actually unsubscribe from? So we can make sure that we learn not to send that kind of email out again. So those are some of the areas that I'd look at. Um, and then social media, probably the most obvious one uh, in terms of digital marketing, obviously, uh, I think Gibbs mentioned, you know, building your brand on social media is part of, part of what digital marketing is. Um, there's uh, 4.2 billion uh, people on social media. Anyone want to guess how many people there are in the world? So basically there's about almost 8 billion people in the world. So over 50% of the world is on social media right now, um, which is pretty big. Um, and, and it, it is going up as well. People, there are more people on social media. It's hard to believe that there's still people is still growing, uh, more, you know, and if you look at this, almost everybody accesses social media via mobile almost uh yeah i mean it says it here 98.8 percent so social media is a very much a mobile thing which is why google's looking at your website to make sure that it's kind of mobile ready um this is how many people so there's 2.7 billion people on facebook 2.2 billion on youtube 2 billion on WhatsApp, 1.3 billion on um, Facebook Messenger, 2. Uh, sorry, 1.2 billion on Instagram. Those are actually quite popular, quite Western. Then we get into uh, Wexin and WeChat, which is um, from China. TikTok obviously is going up. QQ, China, Douyin is actually another version of TikTok, um, but based in China. Sina Weibo is China. Telegram, can't remember where that's from. Uh, then you've got Snapchat, don't even know what that one is, Pinterest, Reddit, Twitter, Quora. So you can kind of see that Facebook's still kind of dominating in terms of um, social media. So if anyone says to you, ah, oh, no, no one's on Facebook anymore, um, maybe show them this 
this diagram and go, well, yeah, almost over half, almost two thirds of people on social media are sitting on Facebook. So, but it's really important when you think about your brand and your business is like, right, what first and foremost, like what platform am I going to go on to, right? Because you can't sit there and pretend that you're going to be able to cover effectively every single platform that sits out there. So you need to think about which channel is important for you um, and your business. And again, it, there's plenty of, um, sorry, I should have said for email, probably if you want to set up your own email, MailChimp, um, is probably the one I'd go to if we're uh, if we're starting somewhere. Um, yeah, so take check out Mailchimp, um, and, and you can start building your emails out from there. It's free to start with, um, and then you start paying for it after a certain period of time. Um, but yeah, so think about your brand. Um, Facebook is definitely the primary location for reach and awareness building of whatever you or your product are. Um, it's probably the cheapest um, in terms of reaching people through advertising. Um, but yeah, so you should use it as kind of like a brand building process. YouTube is really about the opportunity to engage fans with longer form content. There's very much, it's very much if you're a small brand starting off, you really need to go after um, kind of how to related content. It's like, it's just how people search for stuff until you build up um, over time. Um, yeah, promo videos, music videos, that kind of stuff would still go there too. Instagram, you kind of call it the insider. So providing access like exclusive behind the scenes, obviously it's visually an appealing platform. So creating those beautiful images, Instagram live has got quite big um, and it's a really good way of engaging people and getting growth as well. Uh, Twitter is obviously like the conversationalist. So it's about real time. It's about news. Um, I can remember um, bizarrely sitting in uh, my office and seeing uh, um, um, and seeing a fire like maybe 400 yards from where my office was. And I tried to do a quick search online to see if I could find anything going on about it. There was nothing there. So I then went to Twitter to see if I could find anything on Twitter. And I found all the information there on Twitter. So it really is that kind of like rolling news feed. Uh, you get uh, one of the other things that's quite often quite funny on Twitter is the amount of kind of brand um, banter that will typically go on. Uh, I don't know if anybody saw the uh, baked beans on Weetabix conversation that was started up by Heinz. Oh, no, was it started up by Heinz or started, oh, started up by Weetabix saying bread gets all the love. What about uh, baked beans and Weetabix? And then the whole internet just blew up with like Marmite getting in on it and, and all sorts. Um, it was quite amusing. Um, and a good way of engaging um, engaging the audience. Uh, LinkedIn is obviously the business connector. If if you are not on LinkedIn, uh, get on LinkedIn. It's a great way of building your business network um, out and learning a lot as well. There's a lot of good content posted on LinkedIn. Um, I should have said at the start of this actually. If any of you guys want to follow me, um, you can like just like look for brand joe or one word b-r-a-n-d-j-o-e so i'm sitting on all these platforms as brand joe one way or another so you can kind of follow me there ask me questions on there that sort of stuff um and then yeah TikTok is really you know it's very much a youth audience um at the moment and it, it's all about you know reacting to the trends and setting challenges uh, and that kind of stuff as well so it's really important that you, one, think about which channel do you want to go into first when you, you're starting up. Um, and, and then once you've decided which channel it is, grow from there. But, but start small and, and, get, and get bigger. Uh, so the final bit is data and analytics, which um, I, when I started marketing, I really I, I came from a design background. So for me, marketing was about being creative, right? Cool campaigns cool messaging, um, exciting things to do. I can remember like going around Croydon as one marketing campaign, literally graffitiing all the um, all the railway tracks 
for a for a safety campaign, which was which was like really good fun. I, I've done uh, like I said the eight mile uh, movie campaign, the Looper campaign, which was uh, Bruce Willis and Joseph Gordon Levitt. Um, some of the stuff I've done with Adobe, all really cool, like creative stuff that I really enjoyed, and it was definitely what got me into marketing in the first place. But unfortunately, the reality is, is like you can't do digital marketing without data and analytics. And actually, you should use it to your advantage and and really learn how to read the data, read the information, and help it build out plans and strategies for you. So, for instance, even by going on to say, again, let's just go back to like the T-shirt brand. If you go and have a look at how other T-shirt brands are behaving, say, on Instagram or on TikTok or wherever, and you look at the performance of their effort, their, their marketing efforts, and the, like literally like how many likes has it got, how many views has it got, you can begin to work out, okay, that's good. That works with the audience. I'm going to try and do something, something like that too. So you know, looking, looking around at what other people are doing and looking at where the successes are, that's how you can kind of determine um, what works and, and what doesn't. Um, but there are um, a bucket load, I'm using a bucket load rather than another word, of metrics, right? Um, and it's really about choosing the ones that are going to be most important and most relevant to you, depending on what you're trying to do and achieve. So I'm not really going to sit here and go through all of these metrics one by one, but I'll be there forever. Obviously, we'll share this presentation with you guys afterwards. And I'm sure Darren will send it on. Um, if you have any questions about any of that kind of stuff, like I said, you can hit me up on social media. Uh, my email address is joe at brandjoe.com as well. So you can kind of get me there. Um, and, and I can tell you a lot more about metrics, but I guess the, 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 the thing to say is, um, really pick the metrics that you want, right? So we go back, if you recall, we kind of had reach, act, convert, engage. I'm pretty sure if I go right back to the top of this presentation, reach, act, convert, engage, right? So these metrics that we're looking at all apply across this user journey. And you can see here, you know, we talk about reach being, so what are your key measures? Well, it's the amount of audience and the quality of audience you can get hold of. Uh, you know, when it gets into ACT, it's about how many leads have you generated, how much time have they spent on your website, how many subscribers, likes and shares have you got, so they're acting with your brand. When it comes to purchase, it's obviously like, have they bought anything? What's the revenue? What's the profit? What are the conversion rates? What are the order values? And then when you get into engage, it's like, do you see repeat purchases? What's the lifetime value of that customer? Um, are they satisfied with your brand? Are you seeing them share lots of stuff about your brand as well? So those are kind of, obviously that's very, very high level and, and, and the big things, but those are the things you need to look at to see if you're being successful or not. Um, and yeah, good business people, good marketing people, will regularly look at their metrics to understand where things are going well and to do more of them, but also where are they going wrong and where can, and how can we learn from that and improve things and, and that kind of stuff. And that's it. That's uh, probably digital marketing. Again, sorry, I should say for social media, just hit all the social media networks for analytics and that kind of stuff. Really good websites, go and check out Smart Insights. Um, they have a lot of information on marketing in general and, and um, really, yeah, really good information. Um, and obviously, all these platforms that you will operate in, all the social media networks, all the Google Analytics for web and SEO, um, all the platforms that you're using have their own forms of analytics. So you just need to kind of go in and, and check some of those out and work out what you're doing. So YouTube has like view time. Again, that would be another, like almost like a time on site. So how long are people spending watching that video? Do they drop off in the first three seconds? Okay, that now, now you know you need to um, get your message across in the first three seconds of that video so that they actually stay longer because you've actually got your point across or they're moving on to the next thing you've asked them to do, which was in that message.